Crypto Pirates Daily News February 23, 2022 News Headlines Why do cryptocurrency creators want to remain anonymous? You may now get a mortgage using cryptocurrency, but should you? FOMO and YOLO are the most common deals in the metaverse, according to an op-ed. Is the Pi Network cryptocurrency a Ponzi scheme? In a crypto romance scam, a 24-year-old woman loses $300,000 of her inheritance. Bitcoin and Ethereum are falling in value as the Russian invasion of Ukraine begins. Why do cryptocurrency creators want to remain anonymous? According to critics, anyone making money from NFTs should seek anonymity because what they are selling is worthless. However, the creators are concerned about putting their loved ones in danger. The two lifelong friends from Florida had never sought fame, but when they built a multi-million dollar empire selling digital art, everyone wanted to know who they were. They created the Board Ape Yacht Club under the aliases Gargamel and Gordon Goner, a collection of 10,000 cartoons of apes with various hairstyles and outfits. These images are sold as digital tokens (NFTs), and it is now difficult to find one for less than $280,000, thanks in part to celebrity endorsements from Paris Hilton to Serena Williams. Buzz Feed, a U.S. news outlet did some digging earlier this month and discovered their true identities, sparking an outpouring of rage among fans on social media. Doxing is whack, putting people in danger, one Twitter user said, using internet jargon for identifying someone against their will. The story has re-emphasized the importance of anonymity in the world of cryptocurrencies. While the creators of Bored Apes may prefer to remain anonymous in the crypto world, they are the owners of a company called Yuga Labs, which requires them to follow all of the usual rules of company filings, including providing named beneficiaries. Using an alias does not make you anonymous, says Alexander Stashtenko, a cryptocurrency expert at KPMG. The possibility of robbery. It's unclear why the Bored Apes founders wanted to remain anonymous, given that they'd given several interviews under aliases. According to critics, anyone making money from NFTs should seek anonymity because what they are selling is worthless. Fans, on the other hand, enjoy being a part of a community where NFT ownership is frequently a gateway to games and other perks. In any case, anyone amassing significant wealth in this field has compelling reasons to remain anonymous. I don't need the public in crypto to know who I am, what I look like, or my origins, says Al of Moistness, a creator. I don't want to put myself in danger of being robbed or having my family harmed. In the Philippines, where the NFT craze has taken hold, he co-founded Yield Guild Games, a startup focused on NFT video games. He emphasizes that the blockchain technology, which underpins cryptocurrencies and NFTs, is a ledger where anyone can trace transactions. By linking his crypto and real-world identities, anyone would be able to discover his wealth. However, the greater the scope of a project, the more difficult it is to remain unknown. It becomes more difficult if you want to expand your team, Suna Amaz of Volt Capital, a cryptocurrency-focused fund, says. The most equitable method. Creating a DAO is one of the most popular ways to remain anonymous in the crypto world, decentralized autonomous organization. DAOs enabled people to collaborate and act in the same way that a company would, essentially acting as shareholders but without formal legal standing or named owners. Anyone making a profit would still have to pay taxes, but tying real-world people to these entities is a much more difficult task than, say, searching public records to find the Bored Apes founders. From Zeus, the creator of the Olympus cryptocurrency, to CodeMonkey, the creator of the Port Finance cryptocurrency, this model has served anonymous entrepreneurs well. However, many people take advantage of the expectation of anonymity for nefarious purposes. 
According to Chainalysis, DAOs and other decentralized entities are particularly vulnerable to fraud. Anubis DAO was one such entity, founded last October by anonymous programmers with nothing more than a Twitter account and a logo. According to Chainalysis, it vanished less than a day after it launched, stealing nearly $60 million from investors. In the crypto world, it appears that the tide is turning against anonymity. To combat this type of fraud, most of the larger cryptocurrency exchanges now require identity checks. Tsunamas, on the other hand, believes there are still benefits to the DAO concept, arguing that they are policed by the blockchain. Anyone can investigate the transactions of a specific DAO to determine whether they are legitimate or suspicious. She also mentions another significant benefit. It doesn't matter if you're a pseudonymous person if you didn't go to the right school, she says. It is only your work and reputation that are being evaluated. And it is one of the most objective ways to assess someone. You may now get a mortgage using cryptocurrency, but should you? Milo, if you haven't heard, is now offering the world's first cryptocurrency-backed mortgage loan. It's a 30-year product that allows you to use your cryptocurrency holdings, now simply Bitcoin, to buy a house. The loan is then repaid monthly in USD, Bitcoin, or a stablecoin, plus interest. Milo keeps your crypto in a secure location during the loan, and once the balance is repaid in full, it's freed and returned to you. It's an attractive proposition for crypto investors, especially when you consider that there's no requirement for a down payment, tax returns, or a credit check. Should you jump right in and join the company's rumored long waitlist? Here's what you should think about first. What if the value of your cryptocurrency plummets? most significant danger associated with these mortgages is how much the value of Bitcoin can vary. Currently, the company only accepts Bitcoin, which has seen its share of price drops in recent years. In reality, Bitcoin's value has plummeted by more than 20% in just six months. When the value of your crypto collateral drops, it might lead to a number of consequences. For starters, it may have an impact on the interest rate on your loan. The lower the value of your home, the greater your loan to value ratio will be, and the higher your interest rate will be. Milo's loans are updated each year dependent on the value of the cryptocurrency. If your Bitcoin value falls below 65% of your loan amount, meaning you'll need to deposit more coin, the corporation may issue a margin call, and if it falls below 30%, the company may sell your assets and store the USD balance instead. Obviously, if you're looking to invest in crypto for the long run, you'll want to avoid the latter. Do you recall the housing bust? The 2007-2008 housing crisis was exacerbated by loose mortgage lending practices. Lenders gave mortgages to borrowers who were unqualified, and when property prices fell, many of these borrowers found themselves upside down on their loans, owing more than their homes were worth. While I'm not claiming that these crypto-backed loans would achieve the same results, eliminating the credit check and down payment requirements is a risky throwback to the early 2000s, and buyers may find themselves in a similar situation if housing prices fall. If these loans gain traction, so far, just one lender is offering them, although, a few others appear to be developing products, it could signal wider problems for the lending industry as a whole. But that's a different tale altogether. Should you use your cryptocurrency to its full potential? Crypto-backed mortgages aren't all awful, and for the proper borrower, they have some clear benefits. To qualify, you don't need excellent credit or tax returns, there's no down payment, and the procedure is far faster than typical loans. 
They could be a decent choice if you're not eligible for a conventional or FHA mortgage, at least one that's inexpensive, as long as you're aware of the dangers and confident in your crypto's future value. But what if you can acquire a traditional mortgage? You'd be better off doing exactly that. FOMO and YOLO are the most common deals in the metaverse, according to an op-ed. While the concept of a metaverse is intriguing, it is not necessarily prudent for businesses to invest significant resources in something that does not yet exist. One of the most interesting breakthroughs in the crypto and blockchain industries is the metaverse. Several brands, projects, and publicly traded companies are looking into virtual potential. However, because a fully functional metaverse to invest in does not yet exist, many acquisitions appear to be driven by FOMO or YOLO rather than sound commercial judgment. The metaverse is exciting, but it isn't complete. The coming together of a virtual world and the actual world appears to be intriguing on paper. It opens up a world of possibilities for customers, brands, businesses, and everyone else. However, one must accept that, except on paper, the metaverse does not yet exist. Because there is little or no infrastructure in place, creating a globally accessible virtual world that connects to the actual world will take time. While the concept of a metaverse is intriguing, it is not necessarily prudent for businesses to invest significant resources in something that does not yet exist. Staying ahead of the competition typically necessitates taking a risk here and there, but business activity as a whole tends to favor FOMO. Companies' demands to steer a stable course in COVID-19 times appear to be outweighed by the fear of missing out. Despite the fact that the metaverse does not exist, several public corporations are keen to investigate possibilities. Unfortunately, their ultimate goal must be questioned, as not all efforts are focused on revenue, user growth, or other conventional options. Being a part of the metaverse and conducting research into the subject appear to be more important than making actual contributions or providing additional benefits to users. Walmart One could argue that a merchant should investigate metaverse possibilities. In late 2021, Walmart filed various trademarks for the sale of virtual goods, the creation of a virtual currency, and the introduction of non-fungible tokens, NFTs. Even if it's unclear what Walmart aims to achieve, it's critical to investigate emerging technologies. Like blockchain a few years ago, Metaverse appears to be a strong keyword for corporations aiming to enhance stock values. NASCAR Sports franchises have an opportunity in the Metaverse. Allowing people from all around the world to watch live broadcasts in a virtual world would be a big social use case for this technology. Rather of attracting new fans, selling tickets and goods, or introducing new methods to watch live events, NASCAR aims to increase its knowledge of virtual technology. There is no clear and precise business plan for developing this technology, at this time, which is a clear symptom of YOLO. Wendy's Wendy's approach to Metaverse is a little out of the ordinary. Despite the fact that the company began an organic effort to advertise its burgers, the campaign finished with a digital avatar entering Fortnite, amid a food conflict between Team Pizza and Team Burger, and destroying burger freezers for several hours. The initiative drew some attention at first, but it faded shortly. It appears to be a FOMO-driven endeavor, as the business hasn't spoken anything about future Metaverse exploration afterwards. Nike, Coca-Cola, Balenciaga, and Gucci. These well-known brands have one thing in common, they immediately adopted non-fungible tokens in order to expand their metaverse presence. Coca-Cola, for example, debuted virtual wearables as part of an NFT metaverse collection honoring International Friendship Day. Furthermore, the corporation auctioned off a loot box on OpenSea with Decentraland-specific clothes. Another FOMO game, this time in the rush to introduce unique products to the virtual world, even if they have little real-world value. Gucci's Gucci Garden multimedia experience for Roblox took a slightly different approach. 
It's a one-of-a-kind, interactive virtual exhibit in which avatars transform into mannequins and absorb exhibit pieces. In the end, each participant is a one-of-a-kind creation. It's an innovative take on the metaverse experience, but it's not likely to hold people's attention for long. A little YOLO effort that could lead to more opportunities down the road. Balenciaga has started releasing high-fashion Fortnite skins. Creating limited edition things in the metaverse is an intriguing option, but it goes against the metaverse's mission statement. Rather than unifying people, exclusivity serves to further divide them. The Balenciaga Virtual Hub offers a virtual store where users may purchase cosmetics, virtual objects, and real-world apparel. From a marketing standpoint, Balenciaga wants to be a part of the metaverse, but adding true value is a different story. Since its acquisition of RTFKT, a non-fungible token studio that creates digital collectibles, Nike has taken a similar approach. Nike, like other fashion firms, has entered the digital wearable space. However, Nike has filed patents for the production and sale of virtual Nike footwear, apparel, and accessories. None of them appear to have a real-world counterpart, implying that there is no genuine value yet. Disney Disney filed a patent for a virtual world simulator in December 2021, bringing its theme parks into a 3D environment with a high level of immersion. However, rather than becoming a part of the larger endeavor, the corporation appears to be creating its own private metaverse. The corporation stated that its priority is for customers to be able to experience everything Disney has to offer across all products and platforms. Furthermore, the company's properties and platforms will take center role in its virtual environment. Although it's encouraging to see Disney recognize the metaverse's potential, further segregation in the virtual world isn't a good thing. Time will tell whether this is a FOMO move or a serious attempt to mainstream the metaverse. Time will tell. Many metaverse transactions made by large corporations and brands appear to serve little purpose other than FOMO and YOLO in order to avoid missing out on what may be an interesting technology. However, it is unclear when they will add significant benefit to the world, as no initiatives appear to be pointing in that direction. However, the metaverse is still in its infancy, and most of these attempts aren't important yet due to a lack of infrastructure. Is the Pi Network cryptocurrency a Ponzi scheme? Since its inception, the Pi Network token has piqued the interest of cryptocurrency aficionados who want to know how much it costs. The one-of-a-kind cryptocurrency project was introduced in 2021, and it has been dogged by numerous doubts and suspicions since then. Pi Network was created to enable consumers to mine cryptocurrency using their smartphones. What exactly is the Pi Network? It's a new virtual currency and developer platform that allows people to mine Pi coins using their cell phones. Pi Network, according to the project's website, allows users to mine the digital token without exhausting the battery or having a negative influence on the environment. Bitcoin, the world's oldest cryptocurrency, is frequently chastised for polluting the environment due to its energy-intensive mining process. Last year, China cracked down on crypto mining operations, claiming that they were damaging the environment. Meanwhile, Tesla CEO Elon Musk has stated that the company will not accept Bitcoin as a form of payment due to environmental concerns. As more people become aware of climate change and appear to be prepared to solve environmental issues, even Bitcoin projects are considering the environmental impact of their operations. One of the main reasons for the Pi Network's popularity among crypto enthusiasts is that it claims to be environmentally friendly. Pi Network had a user base of over 30 million people as of December 2021, according to CoinMarketCap. Is Pi Network a legitimate way to make money, or is it a Ponzi scheme? Aside from features like in-app chatting, 
the Pi Network app currently has little utility. Furthermore, there is no method to determine the worth of the Pi coin because users are mining the cryptocurrency in the hopes of one day being able to convert the Pi coins to a real value. Pi Network supporters frequently state on social media sites that it cannot be a Ponzi scheme because it does not ask its customers for money. We're not implying that Pi Network is a Ponzi scheme. It's worth noting, though, that users contribute to the Pi Network app's value. Users' time and data are precious, and the app's creators must profit from it. The app has introduced optional video adverts, which must have aided in monetizing the vast and millions-strong active user base. A Know Your Customer KYC, process is included in the Pi Network app, which includes collecting passport information. A validated audience appears to have the potential to boost ad income. This project is founded on the assumption that further features, such as a coin launch or listing on a cryptocurrency exchange, would be added in the future. Users can create an account and then use the app on a daily basis by logging in. They are expected to be able to obtain digital cash by just pressing a button within the app. It's vital to highlight that there's no requirement for proof of work, and this software encourages users to advance by bringing additional people to the network. The software allows users to earn extra Pi coins by doing so. Multi-level marketing promoters and pyramid scheme operators frequently use such models, because Pi Crypto is not listed on decentralized exchanges, it looks that users will not be able to profit from it. The Pi coin can't be traded, and it's also not feasible to buy or sell it. In conclusion, because the value of a Pi coin cannot be calculated, the most pressing concern is whether it will ever reach a point of trade where it can be converted into fiat currency. In the cryptocurrency market, the possibilities are unlimited, and Pi coin holders can only wait to see if their dreams come true. It is impossible to determine the true value of the Pi coin until and unless the cryptocurrency is listed on an exchange. In a crypto romance scam, a 24-year-old woman loses $300,000 of her inheritance. A 24-year-old woman from Tennessee, a state in the United States, lost $300,000 in a crypto scam on a dating app. Nikki Hutchinson, a social media producer, inherited this substantial sum following her mother's death from the sale of her childhood home. But she has now lost everything after falling victim to a cryptocurrency romance scam last year. What caused the scam? According to Daily Mail, Nikki was visiting a friend in California last year when she met a man named Howe through the dating app Hinge. According to reports, Howe told her he lived nearby and worked in the clothing industry. Even after she returned to her home in Tennessee, Nikki and Howe continued to communicate via WhatsApp for more than a month. However, Nikki had no idea that she would become a victim of a new type of fraud, crypto romance scams, in the midst of all of this. When Nikki told how she had recently inherited nearly $300,000, he advised her to invest it in cryptocurrency. According to a screenshot of the exchange obtained by the New York Times, how once texted Nikki, I want to teach you to invest in cryptocurrency when you are free, bring some changes to your life, and bring some extra income to your life. Finally, Nikki agreed to Howe's suggestion and sent a small amount of cryptocurrency to a wallet address he provided her which he claimed was linked to an account on a cryptocurrency exchange called ICAC. She then proceeded to send more money after her money had successfully appeared on the ICAC website. Nikki was pleasantly surprised by the ease with which she could make money by following Howe's advice, and as a result, she eventually took out a loan to continue investing after deciding to invest her entire savings on the crypto trading platform. The Signals of Dominance Nikki first noticed red flags in December 2021, 
when she couldn't withdraw money from her account. Then an ICAC customer service representative told her that her account would be frozen unless she paid her taxes, which were in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Nikki's habit of regularly texting how had, coincidentally, stopped by that point. Even in their previous video chat, the man only showed a portion of his face before abruptly terminating the call. Nikki's suspicion grew as she realized how long she had been duped. I was like, oh, God, what have I done? She explained to the New York Times. Nikki Hutchinson is currently living with her father and attempting to catch up. She is also said to be in contact with authorities in Florida in order to track down her con artist. She was not, however, the only victim of fraud last year. According to FTC data, nearly 56,000 romance scams were reported to the agency in 2021, totaling a whopping $547 million in losses. Bitcoin and Ethereum are falling in value as the Russian invasion of Ukraine begins. The Ukraine crisis has damaged Bitcoin's reputation as a safe haven, according to expert Naim Aslam. As Russian President Vladimir Putin sent troops into Ukraine, cryptocurrencies fell for a sixth day, reflecting a fall in worldwide fairness markets. Bitcoin slumped 6.16% to US$36,819, raising fears that the largest digital token by market capitalization could fall back to the six-month lows witnessed in January. Ethereum, a small arrival, was down 7.98% to US$2,522. On the back of geopolitical tensions between Russia and Ukraine, US and European futures are plunging, said Naim Aslam, a market analyst at Avatrade. Given the recent market volatility, Bitcoin's reputation as a risky asset has clearly been shattered. As a result, the value of Bitcoin is plummeting. After Putin dispatched soldiers into two breakaway republics in eastern Ukraine, UK cabinet member Sajid Javid told Sky News that an invasion of the country had begun. International equities plummeted, oil prices soared, and gold prices continued to rise. Nonetheless, Aslam noted that political conflicts had been overshadowing cryptocurrencies' fundamental well-being. When it comes to cryptos, there's no doubt that fundamentals are improving, Aslam said. By this, we mean that there may be more use of digital currencies and regulatory clarity. Russia is in the process of creating legislation to accept cryptocurrency as legal tender, while a top official from the European Union revealed that the body is open to the usage of digital tokens, but only under strict conditions. However, the price movement of Bitcoin and Ethereum continues to frighten merchants, who have begun to believe that a bear market could endure longer than previously predicted. It appears like the value of Bitcoin and Ethereum could return to the lows seen earlier this year, but we may not have the same number of crypto users this time around as we did the last time, causing the price to fall much farther. In January, Bitcoin plunged as low as $35,000 and Ethereum fell below $2,500, owing to concerns about the global financial system's health, rising inflation and interest rates, and political tensions over Ukraine. Aslam recognized that Bitcoin's reputation as a safe haven has been shattered due to recent market volatility. Bitcoin and Ethereum were adopted by a number of altcoins. At $82.38, Solana was down 13.74%, Terra was down 5.48% at $49.17, and Avalanche was down 15.66% at $69.13. We hope you enjoyed watching and listening to this video, please let us know your opinion in the comments area below. If you found our content useful, please like it and share it with your friends. 
Also don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell for more crypto-related contents. Thank you.